Could I have all the little ones come forward? Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Good? So, question. Have you ever seen somebody who needed help? Like maybe it's your mom or dad yep. carrying like all the groceries from the car into the house yep. and they don't have a free hand to open the door? Or maybe you're walking um, at the store, at, uh, shopping at the park and somebody drops something and they don't know it, right? Mm -hmm. If you see it, you might help them, right? Mm -hmm. What if somebody was carrying something so heavy would you still help them? Yes. What if it was bigger than you? Would you still help them? Yeah. You would? Yeah. Okay. Well, then you are a lot like Simon of Cyrene. Do you know who he is? No? He is a man. He's actually the father of two sons. Um, and actually, I think it's Alexander and Rufus, but I could be wrong because I'm kind of blanking on names, so I'm just pulling names out of my memory. So don't quote me on that. But you can read this. Oh, actually, hold on. I have it up. Ha! I was right. In Mark 15, um, this is where Simon of Cyrene is mentioned. He's mentioned by name. Please remember that everything that is in this Bible is not by coincidence. Okay? There's a purpose to it. There's a reason that God wants us to read Simon from Cyrene. And not only that, it does say that he is the father of Alexander and Rufus. We have no idea who this man is. We just know that he was passing by the crowd that was watching Jesus get marched to um, Golgotha, which is where he was crucified. It's another name of the area of the skull, I think, uh, which means the place of the skull. So here, here comes Simon. He is walking back from the countryside, and he sees this man who has been beaten, bruised, tortured, carrying this big, heavy cross. Okay, so let's, let's look at this for a moment. Okay, so here's, wait, all right, so here's Jesus carrying this big, heavy cross. This burden was laid on Jesus, not because it was his own, but because that was God's plan. So Simon was spotted randomly by the soldiers and said, you, come here, carry this. So then Simon carries the cross. Hang on. Okay. Now, Simon does not carry the cross before Jesus. He carries the cross behind. Okay? So here is this man, our Savior, our, like, perfect person who is at his lowest. How many of us have been at our lowest? There's been days where we've had rough days, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're just having a bad day. Imagine your worst day and times it by like a million. That doesn't even come close to how low Jesus was on this day that he had to carry his cross. And it was very normal for the person who was getting crucified to carry their own cross. They had to carry their own burdens. But you know what? Those burdens weren't Jesus's to carry. But he was still going to do it. Until Simon was selected out of a crowd. And Simon was told to carry the burdens of Jesus, which ultimately, ironically, but not ironically, totally God's plan was man's burden anyway, right? God had, God could have had Jesus go to the cross strong, right? He could have gone to that cross uninjured, 
in perfect shape, but he didn't. He had, what does God, what does Jesus' name Emmanuel mean? Do you remember? God with us. That means God, whatever we go through, God went through. And this march to his final crucifixion place is the like, biggest sign of that. We, there are days where we get beaten, sometimes physically, other times metaphorically. Um, but there are times, no matter what we go through, guess what? Jesus went through it, literally. Jesus went through it. And you know what? Even in the last of hours of Jesus' life, guess what he did? He still humbled himself enough to accept help. He didn't say, oh, no, Simon, no, no, soldiers, I got this. He didn't say anything. And that's actually one of the things that compelled the compassion on Simon's face because a lot of the people who have studied Simon feel that there was some just compassion that fell over Simon's face, and that's possibly what directed the soldiers to see him because he just couldn't understand why this criminal was marching to get hung and wasn't yelling, wasn't trying to plead his innocence. He was just quietly walking. You're not a criminal. And neither was Jesus, was he? So no matter what, we're going to need help. Just like Jesus accepted the help. Jesus may not have needed the help from Simon that day, but he accepted the help anyway. And we're going to need help through our lives. And we need to be ready to notice that. And when we need the help, where do we need to go first? Anybody know? How about to the man who was humbled enough to accept the help from Simon? Sure. Yeah. We want to go to Jesus for the help first. It doesn't mean that we can't talk to our friends and family. But we also want to make sure that we're taking all of our needs and our requests for help to Jesus because Jesus is here willing to help us every single day. We just have to go ask, right? Right. Because Jesus has already carried all of our burdens. He knows what they are. Why are we hiding them from him? I said burdens, not burdens. Silly. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for Simon, for the soldiers seeing him that day. And while it was probably all part of your plan, thank you for Jesus being silent that day. Thank you for him allowing Simon to carry his cross so that we could see the true demonstration of picking up our cross and following you. Because Lord, that is what every day is about. It is about following you and carrying our cross to glorify your loving your loving favor for all of us in Jesus name amen